Welcome to the 15th floor of Radiohead Reaction Podcast, where a Gen X Radiohead fan father tries to convince his Gen Z son that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time by introducing him to Radiohead songs one at a time, where he reacts for the first time, and I react for the 10 million zillionth time does feel like it's been a little bit of time since we've done a video. I feel like I'm saying that every time. We really are still putting out a video a week. We do already have one loaded in the chamber for after this, a reversal, roll reversal, ready to go. Uh, but today we are, if you've already seen the thumbnail, if you, uh, which you have if you've clicked on this, uh, we're doing uh, Street Spirit Fade Out after much recommendation by everybody. Um, uh, this is off of 1995's The Bends. And I've already gushed about the Benz many, many, many times, but I, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, I don't know if I've said this on the channel, I consider the Benz the most complete, greatest album of all time by any band. I have not said that openly, outwardly, that it's my favorite Radiohead album. I know a lot of people are like, are you kidding me? There's OK Computer Kid A in Rainbows? Yes, these are all wonderful. These are all great. But this was my uh, headlong introduction into Radiohead. And uh, not just that, I just think there is not a mistake on this album. It might not be as musically complicated as later Radiohead stuff, but um, it, 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 as a rock album, it just, I, th I think it's the greatest album of all time. And that's, that's, that's really saying something. I'm pretty impressed with my ability to say that. I don't know, just, <laughs> there's not a there's not a, a an angle corner note of this album that I haven't heard a million times, and that's okay. It is an album I do not ever get tired of. This album, I, I, there's a lot of albums I don't get tired of. That's not saying a lot to say that, but um, I, I think it's it's just time I just come out and say that I believe the Benz. OK Computer and the Benz are really right there, and and. And, I, and, yeah, there's so much other things in their library that I just think are just beautiful, wonderful things. But I think as far as a listening, listenability album, if, you, if you're if you not sure how you feel about Radiohead, I think you could just listen to the Benz straight through and you could love it. This is the closing track on the Benz. It's the final, the final track. And uh, uh, it was recommended by um, Melchior Aksak, Raphael C., Noam Abramovich, and Nils Olaf Leif. All names you're familiar with. They are regular commenters. They are uh, regular likers and subscribers. <laughs> and uh, so we really appreciate you guys. You've been around a long time. And we, well, two months, three months, however long we've been doing this. But you've been there from the beginning. Yep. And uh, that is why we chose this song. Because it comes from just a great album. Um, we, uh, I'm excited to get back to some of, some of their newer stuff again. But we're going all the way back to 1995. Even though it'll only get 300 views because it's off of the bends. Yep. Right? That's how it goes. Uh, Jacob, what do you know about Street Spirit, Fade Out? It's a song. Do you not, you, you don't, you, you don't not. recognize me saying, what, no. yeah, I, I don't, I don't think, think you'll know this one. I think I've, yeah. I think we've been through all the songs that I know. Yeah, probably, well, almost. But yeah. Of course, we have included the music video in the description. I say music video this time because this is a great music video. Uh, but if you have not heard Street Spirit Fade Out before we listen to it, we're going to listen to the whole thing. We want you to listen to the whole thing. Please uh, open another tab and, uh, and listen to the whole song and uh, see what Jacob's going to be reacting to. Without any uh, further uh, hesitation, here is... The closing track from 1995's The Benz, Street Spirit, Fade Out. Rows of houses are burned down on me Touching me, oh, this is a two position. Oh, this thing's a one day swallow home. guitar the repeating guitar 
And obviously, Tom York's voice is so mysterious as it always is. You love mysterious. <laughs> it's mysterious. And when he sings and fade out again, I thought that like, when he says again, the way he says it, I thought that was cool because it didn't sound like Tom York. And that's not an insult. It was just different. It sounds like a lot of it, it, the way he did. I like I like it when songs like they sing normally and then one of the words is like they go higher up for one part or whatever and then they go back down i feel like that always sounds cool in the song okay and he did it there so i thought it sounded cool okay do you know so you're saying the repeating guitar have we listened to enough radiohead do you remember what that's called when they play chords and sequence nope oh come on i thought for sure you were leaning into the microphone to say that's an arpeggio it is an arpeggio a lot of this song is an a minor so it's a lot of minor stuff uh but uh beautiful this machine will all that communicate these thoughts and the strain I am under. We watch out for a circle go under. It was hard for me to say stuff about just because for me, it was not repeating itself, but I mean, it didn't get excited. It didn't get, yeah, exciting. It didn't get lower. It, it stayed the same. It stayed consistent and yep. not to compare. Just an example. Some Imagine, Tra- Imagine Dragon songs are like that and I like those songs. So this is definitely a song where I know if I keep listening to it, I will enjoy it. And at the moment, I still enjoy it. I thought the lyrics, uh, the vocals were nice to listen to. I appreciate that you didn't stop it very much because I think you have to uh, let that song envelop you a little bit. And uh, and that's probably true. And that's what I think a lot of people want you to do with all Radiohead. They want you to just stop, listen to it, and hear it. Because you're right, it doesn't crescendo. It doesn't drop. It doesn't hit with a lot of stuff. It just wants you to feel... I don't know what I feel. I feel confused that I don't. I can't feel anything. I think uh, the Benz is extremely accessible. The Benz does work very well as a complete album, but it's not laid out the same way later albums are. Um, so I think it's all very accessible. This song, individually, solely, might not be that way. All by itself, it's really dark and grim. One that I think the members of Radiohead are openly willing to admit how dark and grim it is. I mentioned on, on in the comments that this is just the perfect ending to not only the Benz, but 
the phase that Radiohead was in as they were ready to move on and do OK Computer and maybe even looking forward to something else like Kid A. This song, I love that it finishes with the line, immerse your soul in love. This is after, so first of all, it's after a song that clearly is not a positive sounding. It's pretty bleak. What are the, this out, the um, cracked eggs, dead birds, scream as they fight for life. That doesn't sound pleasant. This album begin with everything is broken. Everyone is broken. They always felt like a lot of their songs were actually more positive than people thought. This song is not that way. They knew this was dark. Tom has said kind of uh, somewhat famously that he didn't write this song. This song wrote itself or something along those lines. Whoa. And uh, <laughs> he he talks about how he's afraid to play it because it it... it if you enjoy it, it took you to a grim place, a sad place, and he's he doesn't want to be responsible for that. He feels he 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 makes the comparison that watching the fans, you know, as they're playing this song, watching fans smiling and happy and thrilled to be hearing this song reminded him of taking your your dog to the vet to be put down while its tail is wagging and it's all exciting. Like, where are we going? Well, I'll tell you where. Well, we won't tell you where you're going. But uh, he, he, that, that's a pretty uh, vivid description of what, how he felt he, when he was looking at the fans. The song is, is, is pretty much about you can't win, life is going to get you, death is going to get you, it's all bad, so the best you can do is immerse your soul in love. Just embrace it, and not embrace the darkness, but embrace the good that you can because life is still sad. And I know that sounds way grim and it sounds really dark. And maybe as a religionist, I don't see it that way. Um, but uh, I know I, I, I see that little bit of hope, even with the sad song, I see that little bit of hope in those lyrics. And then um, what's the very next song that they release on an album? It's Airbag. We're back to save the universe. I love it. What's your score of uh, Street Spirit Fade Out? I don't want to give it a 6.5 again because I keep giving things 6.5. So I'll give, I'll be nice and I'll give it a 7. Yeah, and it definitely is worth more than a 7. So I, when you said 6.5, I was like, oh, you, well, 6.5 because it's just you forgot your scale. It was the first time listening, and it was the first like, okay, it was just a song that, yeah. So I'm not saying it's a bad song. I don't want to see comments. Oh, you don't know true music if you give this song. A seven. There's no way you're not going to see those comments. Yeah. It's a song that I respect, but it's definitely not a song that I'm going to give a high ranking. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good song. Yeah, and I don't know when you'll have the opportunity to hear it a lot, but when you do, you'll you'll always enjoy this song. Okay, so uh, well, let's do some artwork. So as you can see, we only have one uh, piece of artwork today. I did have both of the little kids uh, listen to it. My daughter, uh, she just really couldn't come up with anything. I, I, I uh, just a bit of a, uh, a block. I think she was thinking too much about the lyrics, which, uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> I should go check on her and make sure she's okay. Um, but the boy, he uh, he drew a picture. This is uh, I told him the song was called Street Spirit. So here's someone in a street. He's got X's on for eyes because he's been run over by a car. He is dead. Um, there's the person to the right of the person that's been hit by a car is mourning that loss. And this person on the left is like an angel praying that this, uh, for this person's soul, for the soul's well being. here. Um, it is a, oh, he caught it. Yep. <laughs> it's a dark scene. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe I should go check on my little kids uh, and make sure that, uh, per permanently scarred them for life. No, no, no. I heard this song when I was twice their age so uh <laughs> th they should be fine it's really not uh it, it is a hauntingly beautiful song and radiohead does that a lot uh, it won't be the first time i use the words accessible hauntingly beautiful or anything like that but it is uh it's a beautiful song and oh yeah the, the backing vocals that you can hear just at the end and, and tom uh, how he could sit and stand in a studio and sing like that and pour his soul into a song and then be done and cut. Oh yeah, was that good? Good take? Okay, thanks. You know, like I, I just, 
amazing to me. I, I feel like this you'd finish singing the song and everyone would have to kind of back away slowly and like, all right, you know what? Let's all, let's give each other a couple of weeks. All right? Nobody look at each other. That's probably how it went down. Comments from the last video, which was polyethylene. I'm excited to do some more B-sides. I know people want to see a lot of B-sides. Um, but I, I chose this comment from Vince K. It says, what I really love about this channel is the first band I truly listened to and got me into rock was Imagine Dragons. And now I've been a Radiohead fan for a year and a half. So it's like I'm watching two versions of myself, one older and one younger. One who thought Imagine Dragons was the best and one who thinks Radiohead is supreme. So honestly, I feel both sides. Ha ha. Ha ha. Um, I think that's cool. I, I, I like that comment just because I, I, as much as I start with the premise that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time, and objectively no one can argue against the fact that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time, um, I absolutely love that people find their favorite music. I like to hear what people's favorite band is or how they got into their favorite band because it's always more than the music. It's always more than just, I don't know, I listened to them and I really liked them. No, you listened to them and it, it said something to you. Or it, it, it changed your life in some way. And, and you might think I'm getting too deep, but if you think about who your favorite band is, and if it's not Radiohead, then you just have to question why you don't know music that well. But um, if you think about who your favorite band is, and you think about why you like that band, of course you're going to think of all the songs you like, but you're also going to think, you should think about you know where were you at when you were introduced to it? Uh, what was going on in your life? Why do those songs speak to you the way that they do? Um, you know, and for some people, it's fairly elementary. Uh, my favorite band is Kiss. I like the makeup and I like the fireworks, you know. Not picking on Kiss fans. If Kiss is your favorite band, then, uh, I don't know, you should explore more. <laughs> um, but but I, I, but I don't begrudge anybody that thought. And, and I, I make it sound like I do because I occasionally do pick on some other bands. But um, th that's just because uh, I'm a Radiohead nerd. I can see how anybody could get an Imagine Dragons. Truthfully... Uh, your siblings who have heard all these Radiohead songs, they like Imagine Dragons. They're listening to those all the time, like the same two songs. It's kind of driving me crazy. <laughs> um, but, you know, your your little sister wanted me to show her how to play one of those songs on the piano, uh, Polaroid. And, I, you know, I get it. That's very listenable, very accessible, <laughs> ear-friendly music. And it will always tie them to this time in their lives. That's why I'm introducing them to Radiohead now, because I don't think two young children are going to come to me, and I don't care. I don't want them to come to me in the next year and say, you know, Dad, my favorite band is Radiohead. No, I want them to get older and think of the time that their dad introduced them to Radiohead, and when I'm dead and gone, they'll say, yeah, my dad was right, and that's what I want them to remember. That's the legacy I leave to you, is that I'm always right. Okay. Am, am I right? No. Is this a good song? This is a good song. It's a good song. Come on, it's a good song. <laughs> I appreciate that. There's been a few more comments on some modern music that you'd like us to react to. I like that there were a couple of comments that seemed like they were putting out some really popular um, suggestions. Continue to give your suggestions on Radiohead. I think I'm going to go back to In Rainbows. Tell me where you think we need to go next for In Rainbows. Tell Once we get back to the Benz, tell me where we need to go there. And uh, keep giving suggestions for uh, Imagine Dragons. Um, and keep making good comments, nice comments. We appreciate that everyone's that everyone's so kind, very supportive. Um, uh, we have a lot of fun. Yep. Yep. Uh, continue to love one another. Keep listening to music together. You're now leaving the 15th floor.